Hello again, Steve here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can sometimes dig back into our past. Our past can be a tre treasure trove of things that can help us in the moment. That is kind of an obvious statement, isn't it? I mean, we learn from the past and so on. But also relationships, you know, or experiences that we've had. Nothing that we experience or whatever it has, it la is completely lacking in value, shall I say it that way. And... This, I'm going to talk, the reason I wanted to talk about this was I was recently wanting to somehow figure out how to promote my Inner Genie project a bit better than I'm currently doing. So, and I understand marketing a little bit. I mean, I've been involved with marketing to some extent for, you know, the last 30 years or so. And even when I was a kid, I remember selling stuff in the local classified ads and what have you. Um... Uh, you know, I've had, I've had a few successes at marketing, uh, and a lot of failures, of course, over the years. But I found myself almost completely ill-equipped to deal with the modern marketing vehicles of, of internet and, and paying for, like, online ads and stuff like that, which is where the sphere we have to go into these days, right? I mean, I did have a little bit of a success with that, with the flat belly feeling thing I did a number of years ago, but it it was fairly short-lived and I didn't really put much energy into it. So a little bit of awareness, but not enough awareness to be able to build anything. So I realized I had to reach out for help and I couldn't figure out where at first. So what I did is I started to do some searches into people I had known before. And one guy that I known before who was a rising star in what he was doing, when I lived in Vancouver now, about 28 years ago now almost, or my early 20s, mid-20s, Alan Jacks is his name, and he was uh, he ran a, a program on uh, real estate, finance, finances, insurance, like just it was a whole life thing. It was called Mind, Money, and Wealth, and he brought in all kinds of experts. It was, experts. It was a year long program, and he had I remember Michael Gerber from the E Myth came up. It was well, I was one of his friends, and I sat in a room with Michael Gerber and you know a few other people back in the day, and uh, Dan Kennedy the same. And Raymond Aaron, who was a real estate expert, and he brought in us a person on nutrition and all kinds of different things. He was, it was a good program, actually. And he brought in a guy, a spiritual guru, because back in the day, in the 90s, in Vancouver, it was quite a hippie scene, and kind of still is. And, and Alan was a bit of a hippie in his own right. And so he got he got into this this woo-woo kind of uh, mystic guy from, from Texas, a shaman kind of a guy. And he brought him up, and... Uh, we ended up, all of us ended up taking off to the to the, to the jungles of Belize for a month. <laughs> it was a crazy time. But anyways, but what happened was this guy, this guru guy, he didn't have much uh, empathy, uh, it seems like. And he just basically uh, talked, you know, half of Alan's people to sort of follow him, you know. Sort of like Jesus, you know, drop everything what you're doing and come follow, follow me. So the whole thing kind of fell apart. And some people went with Alan as their guru and some people went, went with with this guy Larry Hope for, as their guru, and I ended up sort of going with the with the the spiritual woo woo stuff for a while, and it kind of messed me up in a, for a long time. And not, not, I learned a lot about self knowledge and stuff like that, but it, I didn't follow my other goals. Put they they got put on hold for for many many years. But I still had this respect for Alan for what he had done. I mean, he wasn't he was in his thirties or whatever, but he'd grown this organization on his own, and ba back in the day, just by you know licking postage stamps and putting them on ma and on in envelopes and sending out letters to people to invite them to come out. There was no internet back then. There was no Facebook ads or anything like that. He did it all a little manual way, right? And so I thought, well, maybe I can look some of these guys up. And I couldn't find anything on Alan. I searched up and he's like, because he's pre-internet, right? I mean, he'd already retired. And he had Parkinson's at the time. And he, he has pretty bad Parkinson's now, I understand. But I finally found him as a guest speaker at at an event in Vancouver on a YouTube video by this guy, Dan Locke. So Dan Locke, he was, he's this um, younger Chinese guy who, who took what was Alan, what Alan was saying to heart. And he worked with Alan for a number of years. And he learned everything Alan knew about marketing. And now this guy, Dan Locke, you can look him up. He's got this, like this marketing empire. And he like, he does, he trains people how to sell big tickets and stuff like that. And I was looking through some of his stuff and, I mean, his goals in life and stuff are not along the lines of, well, I don't want to drive like Bentleys and stuff. But I mean, what he's saying is, is, is valuable. He's a smart guy and so on. So I was looking at his program and then I was looking at some of the testimonials. And then all of a sudden, 
holy shit, I know that guy. <laughs> that guy's in our Toastmasters club. So I, uh, I, I called this guy up right away and that's, and I'm, you know, I'm thousands of miles away from Vancouver kind of thing. Right. Anyway. So yeah, this, this guy is in this, is a student of, of Dan Locks. And I asked him, Hey, can we go for coffee sometime? We went for coffee. We had a great chat and stuff like that. And he put me on to some other ideas because what Dan was teaching was not along the lines directly of what I needed to know because I needed to know how to drive traffic. And he says, Oh, you got to talk to this guy. You got to check out this guy, Russell Brunson. This guy knows how to drive traffic. So I checked out Russell Brunson's stuff. And then I found another connection. And, and, and here's another moral to this. The people who really know what they're doing, they all kind of know each other. And there's a really tight group. Like D the name Dan Kennedy keeps springing up. And of course, behind D Dan Kennedy was Gary Halbert. And all of the people in their circle, everything, all, all roads lead to Gary Halbert kind of thing. This is the guru of gurus in marketing and, and street sense psychology in a way. And anyway, so... Uh, so I started listening to some of Ris uh, Russell Brunson's stuff, and then all of a sudden I hear this. I I, I see him in an interview with with uh, with Jim Edwards, and Jim Edwards I had known from years ago because he helped me start one of my early websites. And Jim Edwards was a student of Dan Kennedy, and and of Gary Halbert, and Russell Brunson is a a student of Dan Kennedy's. And he and he's and he's been a student of Gary Halbert as well, so it's um, it's amazing how it all it all seems to come back, and uh, I just wanted to make the point that reaching back into our sometimes you know you've probably been there before where you're thinking, darn, what was that either that was that person's name or that information that I used to know? It's like the key that you need at the moment, right? And, and, and how, when you finally find it, it can unlock a bunch of other things. It can unlock a network. And what I'm saying is my memories of Alan, I'm not doing any business with Alan. I haven't contacted Alan, but because of Alan, there was all these steps. And one of those steps was a guy that I meet every week. And like, I'm several thousands of miles away from there. Like, it's astounding. And he helped lead me to pretty much exactly what I need, the information that I need in order to create a, a marketing system in the modern age. And a lot of it has to do with Brunson's work, but it's also Jim Edwards' work and um, not so much Dan, Kennedy, or, uh, Dan Locke's because Dan Locke, he, he takes it a different direction but I'm looking to drive traffic specifically to get people to put up their hand to say, hey, I'm interested in what you're teaching and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I just wanted to, the lesson here is to, you know, is to keep, don't, don't necessarily dispel all the, all the memories and so on back. It's a good idea to, because sometimes we have to revisit things because this is treasure trove. There's our whole life. There's many, many years all locked up in that past memory. And some of that we, we don't see as valuable in the moment, but it can be because it can lead to something today in the moment that is very valuable. Steve, you're doing great chatting. If you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, and share. We'll talk again soon. Bye for now.